What's up, baseball fans? Welcome to part four of every MLB team's biggest need entering the 2022 offseason. We have been going division by division through Major League Baseball from the AL West, the NL West, the AL Central, and now today we hit the NL Central. We'll take a look at each of these teams individually, figure out their biggest need entering the 2022 offseason, and how we can best address that in one move. But first, drop a like on the video. It helps spread it out to other baseball fans. And make sure you subscribe to the page so that you don't miss any of the videos in this series or any of the other baseball content that we have coming out on this channel. Plus, you know, it, uh, it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. All right, we are starting off with the Chicago Cubs, who have free agents this year. Pitcher Wade Miley, but the man everyone is talking about, catcher Wilson Contreras. Contreras is one of the better hitting catchers in baseball, so losing him is going to be a big hit to this lineup. But they already have a handful of holes on this team. The bullpen was a mess. First, second, and third were all ranked really low in baseball references wins above average. But the one spot we're going to take a look at is center field, where they rank 28th in wins above average. Christopher Morell played a good amount of center field for them this year and had a solid bat, but he had negative five defensive runs saved in center field. We're going to move him to second base, where defensively he fits better, and we can replace Nick Madrigal's 68 OPS plus and 70 WRC plus. This lineup hit a really high amount of ground balls, so given their 21st ranked strikeout rate, we gotta put the ball in play more. If we're gonna be keeping the ball out of the air and limiting the amount of extra base hits that we get, we need the ball in play more so that some of those grounders and stuff can find a hole and improve how this team is doing offensively. If we can also get a better fielder in center, that's a bonus because Chicago's advanced fielding numbers were not kind to them. The Cubs number two and nine prospects are both outfielders that have hit double A or higher. We're probably gonna lean more towards developing younger talent with this team than really trying to bring in guys to be competitive. But this isn't a super top heavy division, so maybe kind of a mix of the two, bring in a good free agent for a couple years, give the younger guys some time to develop and see how this plays out. Next up are the Cincinnati Reds, who have outfielder Steven Piscotty, starting pitcher Mike Miner, and reliever Justin William, all with team options. And then you have a handful of other guys that are going to be free agents, but nobody that's really all that relevant on this team because this team wasn't relevant to begin with. Cincinnati was ranked towards the bottom in pretty much everything because the rebuild is just fully on. The tanks are rolling through, so we get to address this with a pretty clean slate. Their starting pitching had some pieces that I think we can kind of start to build from. So we're going to address the lineup and the big spot that we need to address for them is going to be out in center field. Their position players as a whole rank 29th and wins above average. So we need to find a dude for this lineup. Now they also need shortstop where they rank dead last in wins above average but four of their top five prospects are shortstops along with eight of their top 30. So we've got options there in the outfield center field ranked 30th and their outfield in general was 25th and wins above average. So that's why we're going to address that. And on top of it, their fielding was terrible. So we're going to get center field and try to address a couple of these things in one foul swoop. Baseball Reference had their offensive war ranked 29th and they were 27th in WRC+. So I don't give a shit how you do it. Find a dude for center field. You've probably got one in one of the shortstops that you have. Getting a pair of franchise guys to put in the middle of your lineup at these premier positions is only going to just kick off this rebuild. Now the Brewers had a pretty disappointing season. They look to be in command of the division. People thought that they were going to be favorites to go fairly deep in the playoffs. And then they didn't even make the playoffs. So we're going to make some moves to this. They've got team options on Colton Wong at second base and reliever Brad Boxberger. And then free agents Andrew McCutcheon, Taylor Rogers, Omar Narvaez, and Jace Peterson. I think part of what led to this being such a disappointing season for them 
they really didn't have a lot of weaknesses on this team. So the one spot that we need to address where it was pretty clear that they were lacking is going to be the bullpen. Now, Milwaukee's rotation is pretty set. Their lineup was solid, and even though you're probably going to lose third baseman Jace Peterson to free agency, Luis Arias had a solid season with the bat, and his advanced defensive numbers actually point to him being pretty good at third, so I think we can slot him in there and we'll be pretty solid. The bullpen, though, ranked 27th in wins above average. You traded away Josh Hader at the deadline. We gotta help out Devin Williams, so we're gonna get another elite bullpen arm, Hopefully a dude with a low walk rate, that's one spot where this entire staff kind of struggled, and help out this bullpen. Ideally, we'd add more guys and get some depth, but I can only make one move, so this is it. And the Pittsburgh Pirates, who are also just perennially in rebuilding mode. They're only free agents this year, catcher Roberto Perez and outfielder Ben Gamble. Not super worried about losing either of those guys. I'm really worried about all the fucking holes in this team though, so we got a lot of work. One guy's not fixing it, but I can only pick one guy, so let's start here. On the offensive side, we've got O'Neal Cruz at shortstop, who is just toolsy as all hell. We'll see if he can put it all together. If he can, he's going to be somehow even more exciting to watch. And then we have Brian Reynolds out in center field, who I think is one of the more underrated star players in baseball. So I think we're pretty set at both of those premier positions. Now the spot we got to address is the starting rotation. If we can get that going, there might be something to this rebuild. The Pirates rotation was ranked 26 in wins above average, which is kind of crazy considering their launch angle was one of the better in the league. They got a lot of ground balls and didn't give up a lot of fly balls, but they were 24th in strikeout rate and 27th in walk rate which led to their strikeout to walk percentage being 29th in the league. This led them to having the 23rd ranked fielding independent pitching. So where we want to focus with this is developing some of these young arms into being higher strikeout, lower walk guys to take pressure off of this defense that frankly was bad for Pittsburgh. Hopefully it's one of these 3, 8, 17, 20, or 30 prospects that they have that are starting pitchers at double A or higher or one of the younger guys that they've brought up recently because this team is nowhere near adding a top free agent. And finally, this leads us to division winner, the St. Louis Cardinals, who have free agents Corey Dickerson, TJ McFarlane, and Jose Quintana, along with longtime legends, Albert Pujols and Yadier Molina retiring. Congrats to those guys on phenomenal careers. Now replacing what those guys brought to a clubhouse is gonna be impossible, but statistically, offensively, I think this lineup will still be pretty good without them. Where we need to address, this pitching staff as a whole could use some improvement. So we're gonna start with the starting rotation because that's just more valuable than the bullpen, frankly. Cardinal starters rank 20th in wins above average, despite being ranked 10th in ERA, mainly due to having one of the top defenses in Major League Baseball, because this team was 22nd in strikeout to walk ratio and 28th in strikeout ratio. They let the ball get put in play and let this defense go to work, and that worked for them. But we wanna to try to take some of the pressure off of this defense. So ideally, we wanna to try to find a higher strikeout ace kind of guy that we can get in free agency. They also have their third, fourth, ninth, and 24th ranked prospects as starting pitchers at double A AA or higher. And the Cardinals develop these guys really, really well. But I probably wouldn't wanna to try to rely on them to be one of these high strikeout, top of the rotation guys for me. You're trying to compete now. Go spend the money or go spend these prospects. I know that's not usually the Cardinals way, but I'm the one making the fucking rules here. So go do it, St. Louis. Or don't, you're probably smarter than me. This is how we fix every NL Central team's biggest need entering the 2022 offseason. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what's your team's biggest need in this division. How would you fix it with one move? Was I right? Was I wrong? Go nuts, comment section. <sighs> Why did I just do that? 
All right, well, drop a like on the video if you made it this far. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the page because we still have the AL and NL East divisions to get to, and I know you don't want to miss those. And you can check out all of the other divisions we've done so far, along with all of the other videos on this channel. If you're a huge baseball fan, which I'm assuming you are because you made it this far listening to me pretend to know what I'm fucking talking about. As always, I hope you enjoyed. Have an awesome day and I'll see you in the next one.